Joseph McGuire, 606 Lafayette Boulevard. I get up here today and start with the comment that I'm tired. I'm tired of good public employees, loyal to their community, constantly getting beat up. Constantly getting beat up. Okay? And Ms. McClay sits up there under the protection of an NJEA contract, but asiles public employees in Brigantine. Do you have any part-time teachers in Northfield? I'm sorry. Do you have any part-time teachers Can you start over because I don't know what you're insinuating. I'm asking if you have any part-time teachers yes. in Northfield. You do? Yes. And they teach a classroom day after day after day after day. They come in, they get an assignment, I'm not talking and they about work part-time. No, no, no. I'm not talking about substitutes. No, part-time. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Certificated, and they work qualified, teachers that I work with, okay. professional teachers. Excellent. Okay. That's good to know. All right. Second of all, and okay. Wait a minute. You You're saying that who's bashing who? Did I say anything about an employee today? Bashing the public. The and you guys are encouraging it. And, and you guys keep bringing up part-timers. You better do a little legal research. Look at the decision that was just made in Cape May about part-timers. Six months. That's it. You can't hire them year-round. They cannot be used to fill full-time positions. And, and again, you know, it's not going to be the first time at least one person on this council has done something illegal, and then, you know, I'm sure they'll try and blame it on somebody else. But that's okay. Excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry. Here's another one who every single donation she makes to the Democratic Club, she uses her address in Cherry Hill. But she's going to tell you I'm a full-time Brigantine resident. And I'm so yeah. poor that I own three properties. Okay? Really. That's really, and it's sad that people have to get up here and attack public employees because it makes them feel better. They're residents of the island. If they're here for the summer, they're residents of the island. They're homeowners. We know that. We respect that. We understand that. But we also know that our guys aren't paying for two homes or three mortgages or four mortgages. You guys need to do a little more research, Fred, into the whole part-time issue because there are certainly are law laws that govern it, all right? And I know Mr. Bernstein's aware of them. Maybe you need to make council aware of them as well. Thank you. Okay. I, I, I want to just say one thing since Mr. McGuire pulled me into his... I didn't hear anyone here tonight up here bash an employee. Thirty-six and a half years I've been in the union. I have never made $100,000. I don't knock what anybody makes, okay? I bought down a brigantine when the real estate was high, okay? And if you're in a union and you're a union employee, you will find out that seven out of ten people do not like you because of the money you're making, the benefits, so forth and so on. But if it's that tough and you can't handle it, you know what, maybe you should quit the job and bring a team and go get a job somewhere else. Because I am tired as a taxpayer coming down here and hear how great everybody is and how tremendous job they do. They get paid. To, that's their job. And if you can't handle a little bit of criticism, well, then go somewhere else and work. That's part of life. And it seems like these people, these employees, whether it be policemen, firemen, city workers, people talk about them and they get all upset. You're still getting your paycheck at the end of the week or end of two weeks. I don't know how to get paid. So, I mean, just deal with it. You're getting paid well. There isn't a cop. That, that you could probably fire every policeman down here in Brigantine, go to the city of Philadelphia, give them a $10,000 raise, and they'd be happy to work at it. They could still make less than a policeman. Same with the fire department. But I'm not knocking what they make. What I'm saying is if you can't deal with the criticism, well, then just quit and go get a job somewhere else. I mean, I just don't understand why everybody, we're all adults here, and they can't handle it. Just like you have an opinion about part-time or full-time, everybody's got an opinion. Just deal with it. I mean, I can understand why everybody's so upset. You know, and we talk about safety, one other thing, if I may. On Roosevelt Boulevard, I can tell you every day that if there's a policeman going down Roosevelt Boulevard, we got cops, cars parked the wrong way, we got a boat on a payment, we got a, a trailer on a payment, we got nobody doing 25 miles an hour on that street. We've had contractors that couldn't leave. The trashmen make comments about the speed down there. 
and I have yet to see a policeman get out of a car, stop any, uh, do something about this parking situation, or, or for a speeding thing that I've went and could make complaints about, am I knocking the police? No. I mean, I know they got other things to do, to do, but I mean, you just got to move on. I mean, people are going to take shots at you, people are going to ridicule you, just deal with it. Okay? You have to look yourself in the mirror. You're getting paid to do A, B, C, D. Now, if you want to get a little bit of extra, that's on you. And you should, and I believe that. Okay? But again, 36 and a half years that I worked for the phone company, okay, and we had guys just punch the clock. Right. And, and I'm sure, I, I don't care what you try to tell me, Mayor, we got people down here working for Brigantine, police, firemen, anything. There are some that just punch the clock. Because that's, that's just being, that's you being a human being. Right. I'm not saying everybody's giving you 110%. Because right. I'll tell you what, like I just said to you, I told you about Roosevelt Boulevard, okay? I mean, I even, I, and I'll take it a step further, I even seen somebody taking somebody to school in a police uh, car. So, I mean, let's not go, I don't want to say this, I don't want to go there. Right. All I'm trying to say is not everybody's giving you 150%. So let's, not, let's back off where about all the, the Brigantine employees or people coming up here to work for Brigantine. There are some guys that they know, or women, that ain't, are not going to the extra yard. Right. And you know that just as well as I do. Right. I acknowledge every time I go to Wawa, and I've seen the mayor in Wawa, if I see an officer, morning, how you doing? afternoon. I hope I never have to deal with them, but I know what kind of job he's doing, he's, so I, I show my respect for it. Right. And that's, that's like a pat on the back. But there are people that take advantage of this situation, and I they're think, making good I've, money, Andy. Yeah, no doubt. I'm not, right? Everybody's I'm not making, right? Absolutely. We all know Absolutely. that they're making, we've no been talking about, about cutting back on salaries. Yeah. They, these employees make fix the problem. The problem I understand that, but I'm saying is they do them. make good money. Right. That's Absolutely. why a lot of them, I'll tell you a matter of opinion, aren't no. running. But I, they're I, being abused. They're not running going somewhere else because in Brigantine, but, you're making good money here. Sally Suey, 805 Bobby Jones Road. I can't handle this anymore. It's in a contract. The city's going to give it to you. So what are you going to say? No, I don't want that. Of course you're going to contract, con go under contract and you're going to take what they're going to give you. It's not their fault they're making that kind of money. It's not their fault. My husband just retired on the fire department in December. No benefits. But I know for a fact you can retire with benefits. Right there, that's a big chunk of money that you're saving, isn't it? Right, and you know what? My summer house is my winter house. Well, let me tell you, I wish I could afford to have a summer Sally, house Sally, somewhere. Sally. Sally. Ann H. Films, 3082 27th Street. When you talk about the contracts, Mrs. Um, Suey's comments about people who took the salaries they were given to. That's, that's correct. However, we have come to realize that we can no longer afford those over-generous contracts. And I think the people who have, are now expecting to have them continue have to look at reality. And what is there is that people cannot afford those, nor are they necessary. And you have to make adjustments. And you try to keep it on the factual and not on the personal. And to use words like attack and bash are strictly out of their emotional words, incendiary words, but they're not helping to, to clarify the issues or to express them well. They, that should cease. We are in tough economic times. The contracts that we have lived with and paid for over these years, we can no longer afford. And every single worker and employee has to accept that fact. That doesn't mean you don't respect the people, but you do expect them to look at the situation and realize what the reality is. Jerry Sage, uh, I live at 1201 Ocean Avenue. I'd like to weigh in on the part-time, full-time issue. Now, I think what the council has been trying to say, and I think we're all in agreement, people have to be qualified. The quality is very important in a life-saving situation. But that if the people are qualified, and I have to stress that, they should be able to do the job as part-time people. All of our professional people, matter of fact, even those that are uh, not professional, require at least a minimum of 40 hours of training a, a year in their health profession. So, right. They're always, whether they're part-time or full-time, the same requirements exist for all. 
Thank you. I, I would like to make a comment about the part-time firefighters, police officers. It, let's be perfectly clear here that it's not permanent. A part-time position is, doesn't mean they're part-time forever. You can work your way up to full-time. When there's an opening, when people retire, that's a gateway to a full-time position. So, I mean, that's happening all over the place in the private sector and in the public sector. I work with part-time teachers. When a full-time position opens up, they apply, they get preference, and they apply, and most likely they're the ones to fulfill the full-time position. So it's not permanent. It's a gateway to a full-time job. I just wanted to make that clear. <clears throat> it's not like we're going to have a department, and that's their career, part-time firefighter or part-time police officer. Okay, any other public comment? I just want to say that just to bring some perspective into what's been going on, um, I think the, our role as council, as I see it, let me put it personally, what I think I'm responsible for is to make sure that government operates as frugally as we can in good times and in tough times like we're in now. We're never going to get at a situation where everything is solidified. It may have appeared solidified in the past, but those days, I think, are over because it's always going to be fluid. And that's why we have to keep discussing it and having a debate. That doesn't mean it has to get personal. If anybody says they can lower your taxes, frankly, I think that's a lie. But what our main job, or I see as my job, is to work toward controlling taxes the best we can. Because one of the things that we keep forgetting here is that a lot of people on this island, a lot, are struggling to stay here. I think we're up to 52% now of our school population takes reduced or free lunches. That has to, that figure has to be in front of our eyes all the time. And we have a lot of older people, a lot, who are on fixed incomes. Okay? We're looking at the casino industry that supports a good deal of our permanent residents is tottering, literally, and people are afraid. People are hanging on and struggling to pay their taxes, to pay their utilities, to put food in their mouths. We have to be responsible now and in the future to tweak out as much as we can. If we're penny pinching, then we're penny pinching and the dollars will add up. But we have to take a responsible view, listen, and not let it get personal. Except for the fact of look at the people who are suffering and who are struggling on this island just to stay here. 